Good friggin' morning folks, welcome along to Tuesday's vlog. We've had a bank holiday weekend and hey up. We've had a bank holiday weekend, I'll walk backwards then love. And uh, it's been absolutely rammed with all sorts of different things. Uh, cheese making, astronomy, cricket, all that kind of stuff. And then I did set out to make a video actually on uh, making some beef jerky. So I'd like to do some for work. I experimented with this a few years ago and I wanted to pick it back up. So uh, I actually cut all the meat open to do a video over the weekend for it. I paid special weekend delivery for a brand new dehydrator but the bank holiday meant that it didn't actually pan out as I intended. But Tuesday's arrived along with the electric IQ food dehydrator which we have on the side here and you'll be pleased to know that it's packed to the rafters with the meat that you're about to see me cutting so I'll cut to the VT now and you'll be able to see me prepping all this stuff up hello chaps welcome along to the vlog today I'm filming a day in advance because we've got an Easter egg hunt to take the kids to on Saturday uh, but today's video or today's vlog is going to be uh, something truly worth watching. That is because, well, if you're a vegan or a vegetarian, you might want to tune, change the channel now. Uh, we're going to make jerky. Now, like I said, I'm filming it the day before because I've just made the mozzarella video. That should already be released. So if you haven't seen that already, uh, just go onto my YouTube channel and you'll find it there as yesterday's video. Uh, and today I'm going to be slicing and dicing and making a marinade for this meat because I've ordered a food dehydrator on the interwebs. I did make one in the past, but you know, we've moved on a little bit from the old uh, DIY Heath Robinson days of the past. So I'm getting some meat seasoned and soaked in marinade ready for the arrival the imminent arrival of a dehydrator tomorrow and we're going to make jerky damn right we are so i've got two joints of beef i picked them up because they're half price in tesco this says large roasting joint don't believe the hype it's actually topside so all we're going to do with this is get rid of this big fat cap on the top and trim out any other pieces of fat and then also in the same part of the chill section another large roasting joint this one's top rump slightly different cut so we're going to keep the meat separate and we're going to do a little bit of a taste test once this is dried which might be another video because it's going to take about 24 48 hours for this to be done and uh, we'll see which cut is best Right, so we're coming in with a big old hardwood chopping board here and we're going to open this packet of meat. Oh, looking at this as well, this fat is just going to fall right off. Oh, you little beauty. So we're just going to get rid of these little bits of connective tissue here, look. These will affect the quality of the finished product. So for the small amount of meat that we lose by taking them off, it's definitely worth it in my book. But looking at that, you don't want to be much thicker than that to be quite honest. In fact, that's a little on the thick side, but we'll keep going. Think of sort of salmon, smoked salmon. How you'd slice that, that's pretty much what we're aiming for here. And there we have it, so that is the top side, this is the rump, there's definitely a colour difference in the two. So the main sauce that we're going to use is Henderson's Relish, don't bother with that Worcester sauce stuff, it's no good for you, no good for you at all. So we're diving in with copious, copious amounts of endos. We really want to season this bad boy up. We're going to let it soak in all this lovely goodness. What would you say, this quarter of a bottle gone in there? Ah, it's not enough. A bit more. Right, and then we're going to do the same 
Soy sauce, we've got some light soy sauce here. We're going to drizzle that over the top. There we go, good generous helping of that. Then we've got some proper fresh ground black pepper. Proper black pepper there. Probably about that much. Bit more. Maybe that'll do. Beef loves pepper. And then we've got some paprika. Again, I'm probably just gonna wing it. Probably a good capful. I'm just winging it. I'm just flying blind here, boys. I don't care. And then, because I've got it, uh, some garlic. I don't have any garlic and onion. Well, I don't want to put powders in. So we've got some Nando's garlic sauce. And why not? Let's just get all that in. That'll add the garlic for us. So that's that one complete. And then we move on to the Naga chilli one. Oh yes. That's a lot you might be saying to me. Oh yes. We don't care. This baby's getting covered in it. So that's the hot sauce. But we're not going to stop there. So this hot sauce has tomatoes and onions in that. But we need some other spices as well. So we are also going to add some paprika to add a bit of colour. Same again. And we're going in big time with the endos. Got to have the endos in there. Loosens everything up. This will also act as a cooking sauce, you know, this will start to break down, break down the meat. As will a wee splash of soy. Right, so I don't want to contaminate this one with the heat, so we're going to go in and mix this one first. Oh yeah, now this is a good marinade. Oh, I can feel it already getting stuck into the meat. Yes. Right, and that concludes this part of the video, folks, because all I'm going to do now is cover up the bowls with the old cling fill, or saran wrap. Saran wrap. And uh, I'll pop it in the fridge at four degrees until my dehydrator arrives in the post. So, it's going to be an addendum onto this vlog really instead of a separate video but uh, yeah all the meat that's in there is just one of those bowls this is the garlic flavored one and uh, the chili one we will do once this one has achieved dehydration the only drawback is this meat has now been sat marinating for almost four days it's been below four degrees so that should be fine and the best before date on the beef was way in the future so apart from me manipulating it and putting it into the uh, the marinade I think it'll be fine we're about to find out anyway because we're about to uh, well dry this out all day and consume it later on so we've got the dehydrator set to 70 degrees C and we've got the timer set for 10 hours so this should still be running when we get home after work tonight We've already been in this uh, morning because we had to have a meeting with our possibly new accountant and uh, also dry hop the beers. That's another thing that I had to do. Uh, but yeah, we're going to just shoot back into work now and uh, well, we'll see where the day takes us because I have no freaking idea. So we're still clearing the old brew shed out as well. I've just... Uh, been trying to figure out what we're going to do for cooling for these uh, cold rooms. So I've got the remote coolers out of here, which were the undercounter ones, but they're only sort of uh, good for chilling beer to the font. I don't think there's no way we're going to be able to use these for cooling a cold room. So I might sell them if anyone's got any uh, ideas that they want to do something like a uh, a man cave or something with them or I'm quite happy to swap I'm quite happy to swap them for a heat dump and maybe a 10 line um, 
water cooled remote cooler. But I think I might have found one on Facebook, we'll see. But this is what's left of the old cold room. So we've got to pull all this stuff off the walls and take all these old couplers out. Really it's about time we've got all this cleaned up and finished. And then we've got to take the old bar out. This has all got to come out and uh, repair the sink. I think we're going to take the sink away from there. We can cut that off and then we're just going to put a sink back in there and we can use this old bar top for the sink, I guess. Um, but yeah, we've still actually got the lease on this place for another year. Uh, it's not costing us a lot of money to keep it open, but it's definitely, it's like £300 a month we don't need to be spending. So, uh, yeah, we need to think of something that A, we can either do something in here, which doesn't incur more staffing costs, because a lot of people have said, why don't you do like a, a gin bar or something like that, but we're literally just next door, so it wouldn't make sense for us to pay another member of staff to stand in here and serve gin. They can just come next door, you know. Uh, so whatever we do, it has to be kind of staff friendly, staffing cost friendly. We don't want to be breaking more money out. Uh, so we might just have to run down the clock on this one and then when the lease is up, hand it back. It's a tricky one. Uh, but at the very least, what we can do in the meantime is start to get the place stripped back. We've come a long way. I thought we'd have had it gone by now, but uh, unfortunately not. So these are the old units. Well, I say old. They've got uh, test dates on them here, look. Where is it? 6.17, so the Maxi 310s. Got two Maxi 310s and one of these MF refrigeration units. So that one's bought off eBay from a mystery seller and these two were from cooler pumps, they're proper reconditioned ones. So uh, they're all legit, these bad boys. So we might save them if we do any out outdoor bar work or something like that or we might flog them if the price is right, folks. We'll take this with us as well, Jim. That's that rope that I bought for their swings. I'll put that in back at the car and I'll ask Stu to let us out. Is he on the phone? Can you let us out, Stu? Yeah. Cheers, bud. <whistles> Come on then, chance. Let's beg her off. Be hey, well, it's, you can do if you like, mate. I'm not in a desperate rush for it. Uh, okay, we're home. All I can say is there's a fantastic aroma in here right now, and it is this bad boy. So let's just have a look exactly what we've got in here. So this is drying out at 70 degrees. Oh my gosh, that is not bad at all. Look at that beautiful looking. Oh yeah. Well. Let's pop it all back in. Oh friggin' right boys. We're getting jerky. Crazy, I think this was a good buy. That was a lot quicker. Remember the old one that I made out of an old fridge? Well, I think this is an upgrade for show. Sure. Listen to him getting excited. Yeah, I've got an hour to kill, so we've come out to Clumber Park again. We're gonna go and walk the Poochie Poo for an hour. See if we can get a couple of miles in. Right, folks, it's gonna be a long night tonight, so we're in the car. It is six o'clock, and I'm just about to set off to uh, Alfreton, which is only 26 miles away but it's a difficult drive so it's going to take us about an hour to get there it's in the sticks a little bit around the houses as you might say uh, we're going to have a look at a remote beer chiller which has come out of a social club it's a green king social club but uh, this one comes with a heat dump um, and it's 75 quid it looks a little bit beaten up on the advert but for 75 quid 
what do you do? He said I can plug it in and test it when I get there, so we'll have a go at that. The only thing that's worrying me is if there's actually any uh, leaks in the heat dump, which uh, I've already bought one of these heat dumps off eBay and it leaked like a sieve. So that just left me with the cooler unit. Um, and thankfully, Robbie saved me with a heat dump, which he could he picked up from work. So, uh, yes, we're going to cruise down there, have a look at this piece of equipment, and if it works, that could provide us with cooling for all of the uh, cold room cubicles for the rest of the year. So for 75 quid, if we get a year's cooling out of it, probably worth it, and then we might be able to upgrade next year to a brand new unit. So I'm going to fire up the old passion wagon, the Hyundai, and this is the first time I'm going to have taken it out of Retford, really. So, fingers crossed, we don't need towing anywhere um, or picking up. That would be bad news. This is a first. This is one of the weirdest little pubs I've ever been to. It's actually somebody's house. There's nobody here yet because I made it a couple of minutes early, so we're just going to wait for these five or ten minutes to uh, go by and we'll go and have a look at the cooler. Well, that was heavier than I anticipated it to be. So this is the remote cooler that we've been to pick up. It looks ropey because I think it's just been kind of sat in a relatively mucky cellar for a long time. So. It's a classic 1000 water cooled base from EWL, where uh, I buy our stuff from. And it was installed in 2004. So it's getting on, it's getting on now. Uh, takes five hours and eight minutes to build a full ice bank apparently on here. This is all interesting stuff. Uh, let's have a look. Filter dryer. Yeah. Okay, well, it's been tested. Huh? So, because it's been laid on its side and it was full of gunk when we picked it up, what I'm going to do is leave it overnight to stand, come back tomorrow, thoroughly clean it, and we'll turn it on see if it pulls an ice bank. If it does, that's perfect. And then we've also got down here the external heat dump, so we'll probably mount that out the back somewhere and that can dump all the heat from the glycol chiller and uh, you can already see the kind of space that we've got in here it's easily as much space as what we've got in that system over there so we should be able to provided it works of course we should be able to have a large enough reservoir uh, of cold ice, or it's going to be glycol actually when we do it, to uh, cool, to cool the cold rooms. So it's looking promising, but you never know. This could be dickered. It might not work. It doesn't have an electric stat on it, so that's probably something that I want to look at doing uh, 
yeah, I'll probably pull this off and uh, rewire the stack controls from an old analog style, which to me it looks like that these are the tubes here. No, this is it over here, look. So that, oh no, that's the return for the gas line. Anyway, we'll come back to it. We'll have a look at it tomorrow and we'll pull it and we'll pull it apart as and how we need to. But for today, that's it. Look at the state of the the coils as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Looks like they had thirteen, fourteen coils in there. That's quite a lot. Hope that pump works. But again, there are a couple of things that are pretty redundant in this. If the pump doesn't work, that's fine. Uh, the only thing we need to work is the compressor and the heat dump. Then we're golden. Right, I'm going to end it here, guys. I've got to go home. Uh, the jerky's looking good, by the way. But I'll probably pick that up and do another full jerky video in the future if you want me to. Thumbs up if you do. And uh, I've got some more to put on for tonight. So I'll definitely be eating some jerky tomorrow for, uh, for snacks. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. Hope you had a good bank holiday weekend. And we will see you tomorrow on the vlog.